Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first YouTube video, so please bear with me because I am an amateur. Everyone has to start somewhere, but um, I will be talking about the fact that I am one month post-op today from MMO. What is an MMO? MMO is a mommy makeover. So we're going to talk about a lot of questions that people have asked me, but I can't obviously do this all in one video. So for today's video, we will be speaking about why I chose to have a mommy makeover, um, why I chose my doctor, reasons why, why I chose the facility, what to look for when choosing a doctor, and just things that come along the way. Well, today is November 19th. I actually had my surgery October 20th. So because there's 31 days in October, today makes it one month. Um, I was arguing with my husband about it, but he's actually correct this time because I'm always correct. So anyways, it's been one month. So the reason that I chose to have a mommy makeover is it started with me having um, two hernias after surgery and diastasis recti, which is separation of abdominal muscles. That's the medical term. So when I went in to see my doctor, of course, I saw a general surgeon because they wanted to do surgery repair of my hernias. However, they were not going to repair the root cause, which is the diastasis recti, which is bullshit, um, obviously, and I'm a medical professional, so I know. And I told them that that's ridiculous because your hernia can later on reappear in life. Hernias usually happen from pregnancies the excess stretching or from someone who's very obese when you're obese you know you kind of push out like your abdomen it pushes out and that pushes pressure on your intestines and it goes through the abdominal wall so i wasn't obese it was from my pregnancies and i wasn't going to have a hernia repair surgery where they would not repair the root cause so i told my surgeon and he also said yeah that's true if you have money then just go ahead and get like a plastic surgeon and just go ahead and get abdominal plasty, which is the medical term again for tummy tuck. So I told him that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just need you to document that. So, you know, he documented it, put it on paper and I went and I did my research. I could have surgery, of course, with Kaiser, but no way. If I'm paying. I'm going to choose who I want to go with. So I search so many places jolie plastic surgery center no it's a it's a definite no for me so many let me not even talk about it but i searched 305 plastic surgery with dr williams i searched for dr earl pure plastic surgery amazing i actually want to have a round two with him of something but we'll talk about it later because my husband's right here but anyways so hi you want to show them your fingers? Not yet. He's cooking. So, um, yeah, so Dr. Earl is amazing. He's with Pure Plastic Surgery as well. He is great. I also, it was in between him and Dr. Ziad. So what made me go to Dr. Ziad is he has this thing called Beverly Hills Belly Button, which I didn't get anyways because he kept my same belly button which is great because I love my belly button. It's not an Audi, it's not an innie, but basically, and he had the drainless tummy tuck. So I was like, well, great, because I don't want to walk around with drains and everything. Well, anyways, that's another story because I got the drainless tummy tuck and my body, obviously, I guess I was the first one out of all his patients because my body's just stubborn. That didn't really work for me because I developed a seroma. But anyways, that's okay. We'll talk about that another day. So, um... So I chose Dr. Ziad, which he's at Silhouette, Silhouette Zuliet Plastic Surgery, um, which is predominantly very Hispanic surgery center. But I think Miami in general, there's a lot of Hispanics. When I went down there, I realized that, you know, yeah, it's a predominantly Hispanic area. So I went with Zuliet Plastic Surgery Center. It's not a private practice. Maybe in the future they'll have a private practice, whichever one, it's fine with me. I had no problems with Zuliet. Zuliet, I'll just say Zuliet. <laughs> I had no problems with them at all. They were amazing. My coordinator was fine. 
everyone was friendly when I got there, very sweet. All the females, the girls, they were very supportive, amazing people. Now I see that a lot of people will say stuff like, oh, you know, they don't talk to you once you put your deposit down. This one, it's a mess. Well, let me tell you something. If you're not going to a private practice in Miami, you're going to a surgery center, there are a million phone calls, a million patients, a million things that they see every day. I'm not saying that it's okay, but it's what you should expect. Don't go there and think that you're gonna be like the princess of the show, you're not. You're gonna put your deposit down and you're possibly never gonna hear from them again until maybe three months prior to your surgery. Because of my research, I mean, I was on the surgery room, which is on Instagram. I was reading things. I joined surgery groups on Facebook, like five or six of them. Like I was doing my research. I research everything. I don't just get up and say, oh, I'm going to go and do something. I want to No, because your life is very important. You only get one life, one body, one life. So I researched and I also paid the extra amount of money that I had to for my surgeon. He's double board certified. He was doctor of the year 2019. His bedside manner is amazing. He explains everything. He's slow, he does not rush, he listens to you. And he tries to give you the best results that he can give you realistically. He's amazing and he is very safe. That is why I went with him. So, you know, I didn't hear from my coordinator. What happens is you make a deposit, you call, and they will call you every single day to make a deposit and choose your doctor. They will pay you so much attention. In those first days, you're like, oh my God, I'm so special. And then boom, you put your deposit down and you will not hear from them again. Like maybe like three times out of the whole time prior to your surgery, you'll hear from them. You might like call, hey, how's this going? Or hey, they won't reply to you. They'll reply to you on your own time. Like maybe their own time, like maybe four weeks later, like, you know, three days later, who knows? But prior to my surgery three months that's when they started getting in touch with me more so i called i chose my doctor i placed my deposit that was it i started making payments monthly 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 towards my balance and um you also should have somebody that's supporting you if you don't then it's going to be a little bit hard of course there are recovery houses down near miami that you can go to if you're going by yourself or if you don't have family support but it always feels good to have support and when I say supporting you, I mean someone that can help you out. I'm not saying that you should look for anyone's approval besides your own because it is your body and you carry it. And my hubby's right here and he's listening to me because he knows that if Dominique says Dominique is going to do something, whether he says yes or no, Dominique is going to do it anyways. Is that right or not, Kunle? That is your life now. I was <laughs> So, because you are the one carrying it, you are the one, not him, not her. You really shouldn't care about what anyone else says because you are you and that's it, pretty much. That's how I feel. I don't care. So, I decided to do, let me clarify, mommy makeover. I said that for those who don't know mommy makeover, it is a breast reduction with implants um, or breast lift with implants or breast reduction and lift. So for me, I don't want anything foreign in my body. I just want my big boobs gone. I was a triple D and I am pretty small. Like in real life, if you see me, I'm, I'm small. So I didn't feel like carrying around those boobs and I had one breast reduction prior. They grew back. This is the last time. I am finished having kids. I have two boys. And so I decided that I'm gonna cut them off and they're gonna be small again and that's it. So I can wear my summer dresses. I can be like, you know, I don't have to have shoulder pain, like hunched. I'm still in the hunched format, but it's getting better. You know what I mean? So, and then, you know, when you wear your bras, it cuts into your straps, like your straps cut into your shoulders, things like that. It's very annoying. And let's not talk about summer, like when it gets really hot and you're like sweating and no. So I decided to have a reduction, no implants. Um, so I got the reduction. I think I'm a C right now. I can't judge yet until I'm three to six months out where I can wear an underwire bra and actually know. And then I got the tummy tuck, which I got the muscle repair and the hernia repair, which is most important. I am so much better. I feel like zero pain. Like when you have a hernia, it hurts you and it hurts your back because you don't have abdominal, like, you know, you're not like the gravity, like the... 
I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of off your balance, but everything is in now. So you feel a lot better and you know, you don't have to strain. So, um, I have my Faha off right now. So hopefully my waist goes in a little bit more, but cause it's still bigger than pre-surgery. Pre-surgery, my waist was 28 and after surgery was 34. It's now at a 30 because of obviously swelling and fluids still that are going to be on you. So um, I'm still swollen. I don't have my faha on because I wanted to like make this video and kind of breathe a little bit. I'm going to put it back on. So um, hopefully because I was a 28 prior to surgery, I want to get down to like a 26 maybe. Like, so I'm still going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm really swollen. You look at me right now and you think I'm flat. Um, this is not exactly flat. Like I'm still really, really swollen, really, really swollen. So when I get flat, you guys will see maybe the three month mark, six month mark, who knows? It's on and off. Your swelling goes up and goes down. But, um, so after choosing my doctor, placing the deposit, I am making payments three months prior to surgery. I started my, you know, I informed my doctor. I said, Hey, this is what I'm doing. She wasn't so happy about it. She said, okay, well, um, I get the hernia repair. That's great. You're going to get that done. But why do you need to have a breast reduction? I think you should consult with your husband. And I was just looking at her like, Mm, is that your job is that really your place like i should access but anyway she's a foreign um doctor she's not an american doctor so of course you know with us immigrants and stuff and we have that mentality i guess of consulting blah blah blah, blah. so i was like well this is my decision and i'm gonna do it and she was she tried everything to tell me not to she's like they're fine they're nice and i was like yeah that's good for you so anyways um, I started to do my lab work like one month prior. You have to do an EKG, blood work, um, you know, stuff like that, HIV tests, all your labs, CBC levels, all of that. So, um, and I also, three months prior, I was taking a lot of vitamins. I suffer with borderline anemia and that just was not bringing my iron level up. So I actually had to purchase Cell Saver, which was additional 550. So cell saver is basically your blood being recycled during the surgery. It goes through a machine, it gets cleaned, and then it goes right back into you so you don't lose any blood. My hemoglobin was an 11.2 at surgery. For that procedure, you cannot, there's no way you can do it without cell saver with your hemoglobin level that low. So after my surgery, it was at 10. I was so happy because I thought I would have... Even with cell saver, I thought I would have dropped to like a nine, which is really not good. I thought I was going to have to have a blood transfusion after surgery. I was paranoid. But um, my doctor was so good, like minimal blood loss plus the cell saver. So I tried everything with my PCP in the beginning. Like, okay, hey, I need you to give me an iron infusion because I want my blood levels at maximum level for this surgery. Anyway, she did not, she wasn't hearing it. I'm going to save that for another story. All I'm going to say is don't argue with your PCP, just switch. Especially if you have any male PCPs around, male doctors, because women, especially older women, they project their menopause on you and their attitudes and their feelings. I am done having female PCPs. We'll save that for another day. And I'm in the medical field, so I know what my labs need to look like, and I know what she could have done. She was telling me there was no clinical indication when there obviously was. I switched my PCP. First day of meeting my PCP, two days ago, he gave me the iron infusion that I was fighting for for like two months. But that will be another story for another day. So I prepared myself by taking vitamin D, vitamin C. I even did liquid iron. I took Hemoplex twice a day, 30 ml of liquid iron. Um, I took zinc. Zinc is really good for your immune system. You should always take it regardless, especially among this pandemic that's going on. Plus zinc is good for wound healing. So take your zinc prior to surgery, not just after surgery. Take it, it'll prepare your body to heal. So I took those things, vitamin C, zinc, folic acid, hemoplex, liquid iron, ate spinach, beetroot juice, lots of stuff, low sodium. And so day of surgery, I went in. Let's talk about post-op, I mean pre-op. So I flew into Miami two days prior. We got an Airbnb and we rented a car. 
and um i didn't tell my airbnb airbnb person like oh i'm coming to miami to have surgery i just said oh i'm coming to miami me and my husband we're gonna explore because it's nobody's business so anyways and some of them don't want you know bodily fluids or whatsoever going around but i knew okay i'm not having like a bbl or something where you'll be draining or leaking i don't even know so i was like it's gonna be minimal like you know so we flew in the day before and we went grocery shopping that same day we got our rental and we prepared some food and then i went to pre-op the next day and he asked me what i wanted they took my blood pressure they went over everything that we needed for the day of surgery you know they take your vitals your weight you pee in a cup make sure you're not pregnant drug test blah 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 the next day i went to surgery actually the drug test is given right before the surgery so they want to make sure that you don't go out that night and smoke weed or do cocaine or something so the next day after pre-op is when um the surgery was sorry my surgery was 10 30 in the morning so i got there at 10 I went back, they marked me up, I met the anesthesiologist, he asked me again to confirm everything that you want, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so, after getting marked up, the anesthesiologist came in, and again, he was very nice, his name was George, their team is amazing, he's a Nigerian guy, he's actually Edo, that's his tribe, really sweet, and, um, gave me a blanket, I remember, then he came and put my IV in, and then I walked, to the operating room which was like literally right across and all I know is I met the surgical assistant so doctor was there surgical assistant anesthesiologist was there and I just laid down on the bed and then I just remember them talking to me and they're like okay you know they didn't even tell me it was gonna go through my IV they just hooked up the IV and I was like okay I guess this is gonna happen and they were just talking to me and then I just was knocked out so then after knocking out i guess they did the surgery i woke up and i didn't have much pain like my pain tolerance is extremely high so my pain level was like a two um let me tell you something though after waking up they gave me gatorade one of the nurses and they told me okay your husband is outside he literally stayed the whole time in the office he did not leave he didn't go home my surgery was like three hours long or two hours long and then they kept me for one and a half hours or two hours so he was out there yeah for four hours so um when i woke up i got the gatorade and you know they're like okay your husband's outside just settle down a little bit we will be waiting for you to like you know come to and i was like okay i drink the gatorade and like maybe one hour later 35 45 minutes they're like okay let's go to the car they took me out in a wheelchair and i got in the car my husband was there and we just drove home and the next day you have your post-op appointment so they gave me like so many medications but the person that i am especially because you're I'm in the medical field and I'm a nurse I was like well I'm not gonna take anything and my husband's always like take the medicine take the medicine it's like I'm only gonna take ibuprofen 800 milligrams I got Percocet ibuprofen 800 milligrams and I only remember the milligram dosage of the ibuprofen because that's the only one I took so ibuprofen Percocet Tramadol Lexarel Cyclobenzaprine for nausea and yeah that was it and of